So we're going to look at fuels. We're going to look at lots of different types of fuel, including raised fuels. We're going to see how a lot of these raised fuels actually contain less energy than conventional fuels, but they help the car to make more power. So we're going to see how that works. We're going to see why you need to add oil to two stroke fuel. And we're going to answer the question, can you run any car on any type of fuel? Hello, Wayne here from Talk Cars. It's time we have a little chat about fuel. Before we start discussing the many different fuel types on offer, there's a couple of terms that we need to get in mind, and that's the concept of pre-ignitional detonation and engine knock. Both of those can be detrimental to the engine, so let's look at what those are. So detonation is where the fuel air mix inside the cylinder ignites before the piston has reached the uppermost point in its cycle. So it's effectively being pushed back on itself, which can really damage the engine. Now knock is something that happens inside the engine during the burn process, and it's caused by an incomplete burn or multiple points of ignition within that air fuel charge. And it's typified with a pinging noise or a knocking sound, hence it's called knock. So octane is added to fuels, effectively reducing its propensity to knock, and it gives you a much cleaner burn. So that's why manufacturers are focused on octanes and octane ratings, and car engines are set up up to burn the fuel as effectively as possible. Now interestingly we're going to look at quite a few different types of fuel and you might think that race fuels have more energy than non-race fuels but actually that's not strictly the case when you just look at the fuel itself. So we're going to use the British thermal unit measurement. Now one BTU is effectively the heat you would get from burning a single match. So in terms of the gasoline engine, you were looking at 18,400 BTUs per pound of gasoline. If we move to ethanol, we find that the BTUs in ethanol is 9,750 per pound. If we went to methanol, it's slightly less than ethanol at 9,500 BTUs per pound. Now, methanol is quite nasty because it corrodes aluminium if the aluminium is not correctly anodized. So it causes a lot of extra wear and tear of the engine. So it's certainly not a fuel you can just dump in your tank and get away with using. And we're gonna look at some of the other drawbacks of ethanol later um, in this video and the effect it has on older petrol engines. Then we come to the big daddy, the one that everyone's talking about, the ultimate race fuel, nitromethane. The energy rating of nitromethane is 5,000 BTUs per pound. So we're going to dissect these fuels. We're going to look at the history of fuel, why lead was added, and help you decide which fuel would be most appropriate to your use of the car. So why was lead added to fuel? Well, manufacturers found that lead reduced the propensity of the fuel to knock inside the engine, and they preferred it over adding hydrocarbons and ethanol to the fuel. It was readily available and seemed to be quite a simple solution. But over the years, there was mounting evidence that lead was creating neurological problems, brain issues, developmental problems, and all manner of health issues. So most countries had discontinued it by 1990 to 2000. So as well as reduce the risk of knock in the engine it also created a barrier between the pairing surfaces of engine components so it offered an additional level of protection. So now we come up to more modern unleaded fuels and we see the addition of ethanol so ethanol does raise the octane level of the fuel and resists knock to a certain degree. The E number on the pump is merely a percentage of ethanol in that fuel. Ethanol is a biofuel rather than a carbon fuel so it's cleaner to produce and it actually burns quite cleanly as well. So there's lots of benefits there. Now, the problem you've got with ethanol is it degrades a lot of elastomers used in car engines, the rubber in the hoses and in seals. In some cases, it can cause them to expand, thereby weakening them, maybe creating blockages or just generally eroding. So you can generally get away with a little bit of ethanol in an engine where the rubbers are susceptible to it. But over time, that rubber will degrade. Eventually, the 
the fuel lines will fail, those seals will fail and you'll end up having to get them repaired. Thankfully most modern cars are made with hoses that use elastomers that are resistant to the effects and problems associated with ethanol. Manufacturers have also introduced higher ethanol content fuels. We've got E10 coming out now in a lot of countries. So what they've tried to do with ethanol fuels is add it in small quantities to standard fuels so very little adjustment is required of the fuel injector durations and the ignition timing in the engine. Um, so little margin has changed that effectively your car's computer can make those adjustments for you on the fly. So at this point we'll also mention two-stroke engines. They work somewhat differently. On a conventional engine you've got a power stroke and then a non-power stroke. On the two-stroke engine every time it strikes you've got a power stroke and those engines don't tend to have lubrication or oil so oil has to be added to the fuel so as the fuel is injected in it gets an opportunity to lubricate those components in the engine that require it. You'll often use a mix of about two to four percent of oil, but it very much depends on the way the engine was designed and how it was set up. So check with the manufacturer's handbook. You can't beat the sound of a good old two-stroke engine. They're very, very distinctive. Fuels have developed up to E85, where 85% of the fuel is derived from bio sources. Vehicles designed to use this are often called flex fuel vehicles. They've been specifically adapted to run on such a high concentration of ethanol. Now having that much ethanol can actually create some sort of cold starting issues and they're a lot more sensitive to components in the car that start to wear so you really do need clean injectors, a good clean spark. It's a lot more fussy when you start using so much ethanol. And it's interesting that ethanol based fuels contain a lower density of energy. So your miles per gallon will always be worse when ethanol is added. The car's ECU will generally adjust the fuel supply and timing to maintain the power figures that the manufacturer is aiming for, which will result in lower miles per gallon. So has lead fuel been completely eradicated? Well, interestingly, it hasn't. A lot of motorsport fuels still contain lead. In the motorsport environment you really are trying to get every ounce of power out of an engine and adding lead to the fuel can actually raise the octane level from say 100 octane to 120 octane which gives you a significant margin to avoid not. So you get an opportunity to get a bigger explosion in the cylinders and make more power. Bear in mind that performance race engines are made with very tight manufacturing tolerances. They're designed from the ground up to run on these very high octane fuels. And in fact, you'll have problems if you use conventional fuel in those high performance designed engines. So we've got other fuels that we often see people using in motorsports and drag racing circles so we've got methanol and methanol is cleaner burning than petrol it actually burns at a lower temperature than petrol it has a higher octane it produces more power so you can see why it's such a good choice for motorsport teams but you will need to burn three times as much on each stroke. So the challenge is always supplying that much fuel to an engine. So you need to think carefully about the fuel pump and the injectors that you use. So if you're using three times as much fuel, how much more power can you expect? Well, generally you get about 60% more power. It's wasteful and you certainly won't be doing this to get better MPG. But on the track, when the performance is really critical and every drop of extra brake horsepower really counts, it makes sense to get the car set up to run on this fuel. Now, nitrous oxide, we've all seen the movies, big tank of nitrous oxide, you turn it on, you press a button and your engine just explodes with power. Now, imagine you could get that pre-mixed with your fuel. That's almost exactly what nitromethane is. So the air to fuel ratio of nitromethane is lower than petrol at 1.7 to 1. So you can actually burn eight times as much nitromethane in an engine than you can with conventional petrol. And that will net you two and a half times the standard power figure. So what's the secret? Because nitromethane, it has a lower power density than petrol. Well, the interesting thing is actually in the chemical structure. It contains oxygen atoms and as it burns, those oxygen atoms are released. So you've basically got a fuel there that supplies 
extra oxygen for the burn. So we've always maintained that to tune a car, you need to get more air and more fuel into the cylinders. Well, with nitromethane, you get fuel that contains air. So just adding conventional air to the engine, you get a boost as the fuel is burnt and it enables you to burn a lot more fuel. And it's quite a clean burning fuel. In fact, it's much slower burning. So often as the exhaust ports are opened, you'll get a flame coming out of the exhaust pipe where the mixture hasn't quite burnt within the cylinder, which is quite impressive. So can you just put any fuel in your car? Well, to a certain extent, your ECU will adjust itself and trim itself to cope with the higher octane fuels. And most of the pumps around here in the UK will serve anything between the UK rated 95 RON to about 102 RON. You need to ask around and see what the actual octane ratings of fuels are. So we do find that generally, if an engine was designed for higher octane fuels, you will get more power. And depending on your driving style, that often equates to better fuel economy. But as far as a lot of these specialist race fuels go, you need to make extensive adjustments to the ECU, to the timing. It needs to change that trim, the spark advance, in order to get a clean burn. You're completely changing the parameters it has to work with. And if you want to use these fuels, you're probably doing it in a motorsport environment environment or looking at, at track days. So it really does make sense to get the car set up. So going back to what we said at the beginning about different fuels containing different energy levels and that a lot of these race fuels actually contain less energy than the non-race fuels, why is it you can make more power when you use these race fuels if they contain less energy? Let's have a look at those figures again, but we're gonna add an important set of numbers, the air to fuel ratio. This is the mixture of fuel and air that you need to make combustion. And if that varies too much, you just won't get a very good ignition or burn from that fuel. The air fuel mix for gasoline is round about 14.7 to 1 in order to get that good clean ignition and burn. If we move to ethanol, we find that the BTUs in ethanol is 9,750 per pound and the air to fuel ratio is 9 to 1. So it's a lower air to fuel ratio. If we went to methanol, it's slightly less than ethanol at 9,500 BTUs per pound, the air fuel ratio for that is six to one. Then we come to the big daddy, the one that everyone's talking about, the ultimate race fuel, nitromethane. The energy rating of nitromethane is 5,000 BTUs per pound, but the ratios it should be mixed in is just 1.7 to one. So nitromethane is actually very explosive. It should be handled with extreme caution and lots of adjustments need to be made to the car in order to use it effectively and safely. As it burns, it releases nitric acid vapor, which is really nasty stuff. So all of those in the pit crew and those working on the engine need to have some kind of protection against those fumes that the engine is creating. So the key benefit of using these race fuels or higher spec fuels fuels that actually contain less energy is the fact that you can use more fuel to the air that you're getting into the engine and that is where you add the power. We really hope that this video has been interesting to you. There is so much more we can talk about with fuels but we try and just keep these very concise and punchy. Subscribe to the channel, we've got more interesting stuff coming up. Let us know in the comments if you've done any of these mods to your car and about things you'd like us to cover in the future and we'll put that on our production schedule and make sure that we provide the topic that interest you, our readers. So thanks for watching. And if you're interested in tuning cars, stay tuned to Talk Cars. Thanks for watching. Bye.